I think that we have to go back to what Mark Cuban said yesterday on, on Scott Wapner's show, which is that this is a man who is not a conventional uh, uh, CEO. And we keep expecting a certain level of convention, and he's not going to give it to you. So therefore, you should stop looking for it. Now, this kind of uh, whole sequence all seems backward. Idea, maybe you put, put the company up for sale, maybe you take it private, let's hire Goldman, let's hire Wachtell, let's get a special committee going, let's see if it's right. Well, he does it backward. And, and instead of people saying, well, you know what, all he did was do it backward, they say, well, he's just covering his tracks the whole way. He should never have tweeted. The problem with that is, is that we don't know what's in his head. We really don't. Does, it, does that matter? I mean, does the well, SEC it, care? I, well, I, you, you, to the point of intent is what you're saying. Well, I mean, because, like, uh, you know, one SEC might call him in and say, listen, you can't do that anymore. But if it's a Theranos situation, the SEC calls him in, they only refer it to justice, and five years from now, they remove him. And I am saying that when I look at what's really going on, I know there are a lot of people who say, look, this, this Saudi fund, the public investment fund, is not backing him. And, and that that's not what's going on. But when you think about how much money they could raise and how they own Aramco, and Aramco has said over and over again to their own advisors, we have to be a hedge. We have to have a hedge against oil. Everything makes sense. Now, the bears want to tell you it doesn't matter that everything makes sense. But you know what? If you're the SEC, what are you going to do? You're going to call the Saudis in? Hey, guys, get over here. We're gonna, we need to talk. You're going to call SoftBank? That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Right. And that's what I care about. Uh, what about um, the, 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 going, into the, going into the Times piece? They quote sources close to the Saudis saying they haven't taken any steps that a transaction like this would entail. They raised the, the CFIUS word, right, saying that might invite some review on that front if this were to even happen. But remember, the, this all started with him getting uh, funding uh, that he could have had for his company. That instead, he told him to go buy in the open market. And so with that discussion, it, it really, people have forgotten about this, particularly the bear. And I'm not going to the bull nor bear. I mean, this is, I love the car. But what, what really has mystified a lot of people is why didn't he need the money for his own company? If he was really in trouble, why not the Soys be happy? Say, listen, if they, it, two, there's $2 billion that you can buy in the open market, and there's $2 billion you can buy from the company. And he, why didn't he say, listen, you got to buy it from us and you need the $2 billion, of which case the stock would be at 420 because then the bears would have no case. Sure, sure. Because he'd have all the cash he needs. You think he should have done that instead? Uh, yeah, I think that money's good. Uh, I think that a company that has cash flow negative should have done that. Yep. But again, he doesn't do what anybody else does. And we cannot, everybody wants to hold him to the same thing that, uh, that we'd expect from, uh, literally, from the great American companies that we all, in fact, okay? Well, he doesn't play by the rules. Now, that doesn't mean that the SEC is going to enforce the conventional rules. A lot of the bears are praying, not unlike what Bill Ackman did in Scott Watt's sure. excellent H Hoping book. for regulatory. Yes, come the on, count. like SEC, let's go. Right. And, you know, and I'm reading the Carry You book for Theranos because I want to interview that gentleman. And, you know, the SEC, they get on the case. And five years later, man, they come down with the jackboot. It was five years. In there, you had the Wall Street Journal basically laying out a prosecution, and they looked, and they looked it over. The, you, if you're waiting for the SEC to hammer Tesla, well, let me just tell you that he'll be, he'll have, a, it will be on Mars by the time the yeah, SEC. Yeah. Does so that. then, what does it do for um, the Bears' argument that they're that they are cash constrained, that they can't make 5,000 cars a week? Are those things? Settled well, in the near term? Well, Cash mean, flow positivity for a second half? if he puts in a tweet that says, I, I cannot believe the number of cars we made overnight. We have really got this down. What are you going to do? I mean, the guy's the tweeting magician. Yeah. Okay, you can't say, you know what? I don't see Ford Motor doing what they're doing. Hey, gee, Mary Barr's not doing this. I mean, do we really care? This is not a conventional company. He does things that are not conventional. If you want to short it, you're shorting. You're, you're shorting the honey badger. <laughs> honey badger don't, don't care. Yeah, don't, that's going back a ways. We almost forgot about that one. Yeah, you you make him sound like you're trying to wrangle a, a, a you know, a hog that's uh, slathered in oil. And I just, you know, when you're shorting, I mean, look, the shorts are not here saying, 
wow, two billion dollars in. They're saying, hold it, Wachtell hasn't been contacted. Well, go call Wachtell. You think that they're going to talk to you? <laughs> Silver Lake not involved. Yeah. What you think? Hey, Levy. Hey, Silver Lake. Are you guys involved? Goldman Sachs. Guys, have you ever done what well, we did? A couple billion dollar bond offer. Are you? Let's call Solomon right now. Why don't we get him on the? Uh, what do we call it, it, when we have someone on the hotline here for CNBC? It's been a it's challenge a, for reporters to confirm what what Musk is saying right here. Right. So I mean, let's call let's call Munger Tolls right now and, and nail it down. You can. He's too smart. Yeah. I mean, remember he's David Blaine. You can't figure out how he How did he get the king of spades in his mouth and sew his lips up when I said you should have the king of spades in there? Do, do you have faith in the board to uh, appropriately consider the feasibility of this? Or Highly independent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Again, I mean, look, you know, boss, okay, so he worked with Solar City. Out? I don't know. I mean, Hey, he worked. He was the CFO of of, 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 of Cypress Semi. Hey, that was Ted Ryan. You know, that was Mr. Dr. Rogers. Denholm. I mean, look, Ebony, it's a real company. They're very successful. For I mean, Linda Johnson, right? You know, Denholm, okay, she served as Toyota Motor Company Australia for seven years and Arthur Anderson. Wait, okay, so they're not titans of industry. Mm. This is not the Procter & Gamble board. This is not Jim McNerney and mm. Frank Blake checking right. off on it. Are they independent? I mean, most companies are not beholden to the CEO the way this is. Right. I mean, I, he has directors. That's a big deal. <laughs> That's a plus. Right? I mean, and they're not all his brother. I mean, why not? I mean, <laughs> I mean, they're not all closely related to him. I mean, this is about his independence. So then say, well, we want Murdoch. Why is it Murdoch? Well, you know what? Because Murdoch's not. I mean, remember what Cuban said yesterday. Like, he runs it like the Mavericks. Uh, uh,